I'm Richard Brody, I'm a film critic at The New Yorker, and these are the best movies of 2022. You know, I very much enjoy reading lists, and I very much enjoy making lists. And they don't take the place of criticism. They're a supplement to criticism. They're a sidebar to criticism. But they're a way of doing two things at once. First, they help you remember things in a short space. And second, they're a matter of judgment. They suggest what is worth remembering. These are things to prioritize. These are things which, when you look back at the year, are going to be worth recalling. The third best film of 2022 is Armageddon Time in which the director James Gray tracks the epicenter of American political pathology to his native borough of Queens. It's a political coming-of-age story. It's the story of a young, white, Jewish boy growing up in a happy yet troubled household. Not rich, not poor. He is carefree in his own daily life and discovers that for being equally carefree, his new friend, who is black, pays a terribly high price. <laughs> I have eyes in the back of my head, Mr. Davis. I didn't even do anything. I will not tolerate any nonsense. Cut it out or you will go to Principal Seabell's office. In a way, the, the protagonist, played by Banks Repetta, is not the most vivid performer in the film. In fact, he's a little effaced, which is part of the story. His parents are played by powerful actors, Jeremy Strong and Anne Hathaway, and his grandfather by Anthony Hopkins. I'm going to tell you now, you've got to do something, you've got to say something, OK? Many of today's political conflicts involving the white middle class are laid bare in the experiences of James Gray's childhood alter ego. The second best film of 2022 is Nope. Jordan Peele's fantastically imaginative genre mashup Nope is the story of the only black-run horse farm in California, servicing Hollywood. Did you know that the very first assembly of photographs to create a motion picture was a two-second clip of a black man on a horse? And that man is my great-great-grandfather. Great. There's another great-grandfather. It's built around the history of black people in the movie business, included and excluded, included and kept invisible. It's the story of the heirs to this farm who find that their farm is being subjected to an invasion from outer space. Suffice it to say that vision from outer space to Earth and from Earth to outer space is one of the central tropes of the film. Nothing happens in this film without a cinematic or photographic correlate. Going back to the very birth of cinema, using early cinema technology, using long superseded photographic technology, the effort to save the farm, to save their lives, to save the Earth from destruction by space aliens involves the art and the technique of the cinema. And it looks ahead to what the cinema could, may, and perhaps even should be going forward. The best movie of 2022 is Benediction. The British director Terence Davis's biopic of the poet and memoirist Siegfried Sassoon. Benediction feels like a very personal film for Davis, regarding life as a gay man, regarding grief, regarding love, regarding family, regarding the life of an artist, regarding the temptation of popularity, regarding the intersection of personal life with grand history. It is very much an elaborate, lyrical, beautiful, sumptuous historical fantasy. We're great admirers of your poetry, Siegfried. Before you take offense either, we like your work too. Careful, Stephen, that was almost enthusiasm. Davis is one of the great literary filmmakers of modern times. In Benediction, Davis further develops and expands his relationship to literature in cinema with his use of poetry, classical music, popular music, costume, furnishings, decor, architecture. He embraces the past aesthetically and transfigures it into an aesthetic entirely his own. One of the things that marks most of the best films of 2022 is their relationship to history and to memory. And I think that the reason for that is largely political, a way of confronting present day conflicts by way of their roots and their manifestations in the past. The unifying theme has been resistance. The crises of the past few years have finally coalesced in a bunch of films 
that have expressed indignation, anger, and has suggested the possibility that through thought and action, things can actually become better.